Hey there, Photo Universe. So this is part one of um, Photo Universe's Film School 101. And uh, what we're going to learn in this video is how to get the shot film onto the reel for your daylight film loading tank. Now, these metal tanks are really cool. Uh, I'm not 100% sure if you could buy these anymore. Um, you, I know you can get them used if you see them on eBay or whatever. They're really great. The only thing you have to watch out for is that your film reel is bent. Um, but uh, in this video we're going to demonstrate how to get the film on the reel. Which is, the reason I'm starting with that is because that is the hardest part of, of, of developing black and white film. Um, it, it, when, when you learn how to get the film onto the reel, you're, you're there because you have to do it in the dark. So, um, so that's what the this is the first video is going to be about is how to get the film on the reel, and uh, the reason for that is is we picked up a Nikon F100, which was made in 1999. Well, I don't know if this camera was made, but these cameras first came out on the marketplace in 1999, right before digital, and they were one of the best film cameras ever made. Uh, a lot of people considered it the F5 Lite. Um, Pick this camera up for 200 bucks. I remember, and it's practically virtually brand new. Uh, I remember when these, so that's a professional level Nikon film camera for 200 bucks, full frame, right? Film is full frame. Um, I remember when these cameras first came out, they were like 1400 bucks and that was $1999 when gas was under a dollar a gallon. So that's pretty fascinating. Picked up this Nikkor uh, 35mm F2D, have always loved this lens. Um, back when I was in college, um, I won the Oregon uh, Best Spot News photo for one of the years that I was in, on the school newspaper. And I used this lens, and I might have used an F100. I don't think so. I think I used an FM2 at the time. Um, but that was pretty cool. So, not that I'm bragging, just that's one of the awards that I've won um, back in the day. Uh, and I used the 35 F2. I still remember that. Um, anyway. So the thing about the, the F100 that's interesting is, uh, was, it the, was it the perfect camera? Well, you know what? There's always something missing, right? There, and the reason, I'm just saying this for a reason, because I got a review coming up pretty soon, or an impressions, or whatever the th I do, an, a Photo Universe style review, of what may be the perfect camera. There's no emissions, right? So we got the F100, and I remember back in the day, what, what were the issues? Well, number one, so here's something interesting. Uh, this camera is uh, 15 years old now, and the layout is very similar to a D810, which is one of Nikon's newest cameras, pro-level cameras. And people go on and on and on about, well, you know, the pro-level layout and ergonomics of a Nikon camera. There's a reason for that. There's your 10 pin, there's your PC socket. You've got buttons up here because Nikon feels that dials are fragile. Uh, whether they are or not, I don't know. Uh, your drive mode dial works the same. Your mode button's over here to set uh, program or aperture priority or shutter priority, etc. Uh, plus or minus exposure compensation is in the same place. The on-off switch works the same. You even twist it to get your light on your LCD screen. So there's a reason why the Nikon Pro layout is so important because it's what, if you're a pro, it's what you're used to for years. Since, since at least 1999, and I think uh, before then. Um, probably it was established by the uh, Nikon F4, was the first camera that had that uh, digital uh, computer layout interface. Um, anyway, so uh, what were the things that were remiss on this camera that keep it from being the perfect film camera? Uh, Nikon, where's the IP shutter blind? Right? Pro cameras have that. You've got the round, it takes the round accessories, the pro accessories, but where's the shutter blind? That's a cost cutting measure. This camera, if it's a pro level camera, it should have that. Another uh, bone of contention on the early models, the rewind fork is a triangular rewind fork. That would break. 
So they had to upgrade that and they made it out of plastic. Now this stronger plastic evidently with the different design works fine. Um, reports they have uh, plastic hooks to close the back and those break. Um, not too frequently, but that's one of the soft spots. A pro level camera should have a metal back closing on a film camera, I think. Um, and the other thing was, where's the mirror lockup? So, uh, um, Oleg, uh, I, forget, I don't know his last name, but I will annotate his website. Um, there's a Russian fellow that takes photographs of um, China. Beautiful, beautiful website, beautiful stuff. Um, has some uh, reviews on the F100. That's how I found his site. And um, he's done some tests on the mirror lockup and hasn't had a problem. Uh, and he concludes that the F100 probably didn't really need a mirror lockup. Uh, still, and, and I com probably agree with him, um, but it would still be nice to have, right? It would be nice to have the option. So, not that I'm disagreeing with him, I, just, I think he would agree that, that it would be nice to have the option. But, uh, but you can buy an F100 and shoot it at a fifteenth or an eighth of a second and not worry about it. You'll still get sharp images. So anyway, that's enough about the F100, but that's what kind of predicated this new film series. So a little background on that, um, and uh, we're going to get into it. So uh, a few words on the film holder and how to get uh, the film into the cassettes. And you need some of those and uh, etc. So I hope you enjoy the new series. So it takes this stuff, which if you're not familiar with it, this is film. And um, this was actually a uh, strip of film where I loaded it into a cassette and kind of screwed up. And so I left it out because I want to use it for demonstration purposes. Now, so you go up to... This is the Arista EDU Ultra 200. 100 foot roll of film, $40.99. Available at Freestyle Photographic Supplies. You're going to need some of that. This is a can of Arista.edu 200 speed. Um, it's, pro it's made in the Czech Republic. It's probably Foma, uh, which is a brand of uh, black and white film. And it comes in a can, and obviously the film is not in here anymore. Um, you don't want to, when you, when you, this is about 20, 35 bucks, 40 bucks right now for a 100 foot roll of film. Um, that's a roll of 36. So what's that, about three feet? So do the math on that. It's about 30 rolls of film. And you're going to need one of these, which is a, this is, I don't think these are made anymore. This is, was made by Faf Products, um, and it was made in the USA, so that's probably definitely not made anymore, in Ontario, California. But um, I, this is one of the film loaders that I enjoy the most. And so basically what you're going to do is when you buy your roll of film and you buy, but the film loaders all work the same, right? I mean, the film goes in this end, and it, it's, it's got locks and, and safety features so that you can open it up in the daylight and put your film cassette in here and then you close it up and then you twist the thing to open the gate and then you roll your film onto your spool and then you close it and then and they all work the same. So um, follow the instructions that come with the film loader. Um, I'll show you the Lloyd film loader is about 30 bucks from Freestyle. This is the Legacy Pro Lloyd 35mm bulk film loader available at Freestyle Photographic Supplies. That's uh, www.freestylephoto.biz. Um, works the same way. It's a square instead of a pointy thing, but they're all the same. Um, so you get your film loader, and you get your film. Don't open the can in the daylight. So what you do is you don't need a dark room. For, for, for all this stuff, you don't need a dark room. What you need is a dark closet at night. And by dark, I mean dark. I mean no light at all. Um, I, I, in this place where I'm living now, I've got a closet inside a bathroom that is, is totally dark. So what I do is I go into the closet with this uh, can and this uh, loader, and I take the film out of here in, the, in total darkness. And by total darkness, I'm talking about like you're sitting in there in 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and you can't see anything. That, that, I mean, if you see a faint glow from something, that's not good enough. So total darkness, open this can up, follow the instructions, put the film into your loader, uh, follow the instructions, load the film into the cassettes. Okay, that is fairly straightforward and fairly easy to do. Um, then you're going to need a 
film, a uh, daylight film tank. So, so you so you load your film into your cassettes. It's just standard film. Then you put the film into your camera, in the back of your camera here, right? Load up your camera. Take your 30 exposures, 35 exposures, whatever. Take the film cartridge out of here. And no, nothing I'm telling you so far is difficult. Okay, just follow the instructions that come with the bulk film loader. You'll be fine. So then you go back into your dark closet. And you got to lay out your stuff, right? You need a daylight film developing tank. And what this is, is when you get your film in the dark, you take your film out of your cassette, you load it onto this reel, you put the reel into the tank, you put the lid on the tank, and guess what? You can turn the lights on. Now you're good to go. And, um, and then you pour your chemicals in through the top, and you process your film, and when you're done with the fixer, and use some photo flow, and then you can take your film out into the daylight because it's developed film. Um, the hard part, which is what this video is kind of about, the most difficult part of learning to develop film is getting this film on this reel. It's an acquired skill, and I'm going to show you how I do it. And uh, it's actually easier for me to do it with my eyes closed because when I'm, I'm not used to looking at it because in the dark, you don't look at it. So if, I, if I'm looking at it while I'm doing it, it's hard to do. Hey there, Photo Universe. Okay, here we go. So what I do is uh, I have my film cassette and I take the film out of the cassette, but I have everything laid out in the dark so I know where it is, right? So I get, I get the film out of the deal out of the film cassette and you got to cut off that little leader in the dark so you need a pair of scissors and then I take my reel and I feel so let's just put that reel out there anyway which way right I take my reel and I pick it up and then I feel for it and then I feel these edges here okay and then I know which way the film goes it actually goes this way away from nope it goes the other way it goes this way so it winds on okay all right and so then I take my film and I take my film. I'm going to do this with my eyes closed. All right. I got my film and I take it and I just kind of, okay, see, you try to do this gently. I kind of, okay. The trick here is I curl it a little bit. You don't want to do it too much because you'll crease the film. And if there's a, if there's a negative there, um, you're going to put marks in it, but you'll learn how to do it. So I basically the bottom line is there's a curl to the film too. I can, you can tell which way the film bends. So you're not putting it on backwards like this with the emulsion. This is the emulsion side. This is the side that doesn't have the emulsion on it. And, and this side, you don't want to scratch the film at all, but this side goes inside. Okay. So you take your film and the trick is to pinch the film a little bit, not too much. So, it, so you kind of give it a curl like that. And then you get it in there. Okay, I just felt it go in. There's the key. And now you start winding it, right? You see what I did there? Now, every couple of winds, right? So I want to keep that curl on it. See what I just did there? I, I can't see it. I got my eyes closed because it's much easier to do with my eyes closed. But you want to give the film a little twist. If everything's moving and you can feel it moving in there, don't move it too much. You'll pull it out, right? But if everything's moving in there, then you can tell you're not screwing it up, all right? And so you keep winding. I can and th notice what this finger is doing and what this hand's doing. So every once in a while, I give it a little pull and tug, and I can feel everything's. This finger's kind of my quality control finger. It's letting me know that things aren't getting sideways in there. And I got my eyes closed, and I'm doing this, and you just keep winding it. Give it a little. You can feel it. It's, it's loose. It, it, once it starts binding, it won't move anymore. And you know what? I'm not going to be able to make it bind. Maybe, maybe we'll get lucky in a bad way, right? And it'll bind so I can show you that it, how it screws up. But I've been doing this for so long that I just can instinctively... I mean, it's going to be hard for you to do it and not bind it up the first few times. I'm keeping a little bit of twist. Not too much. Like I said, you don't want to pinch it too much because now you're going to leave a mark in the film. You know how plastic makes those marks? But it's just enough to get it in between the the uh, the rails of the of the reel okay and there we go and there it is it's I'm almost at the end I can feel it and it's still loose see it moving okay right to the end twist it right in there make sure this end piece feels good in the dark that's great now in the dark you want to feel for your thing put that in put that in now the lights can come on done 
That is the hardest part of developing film. When, uh, I'm going to do another video where we'll talk about uh, how to develop the film, how to put the chemicals in there, etc., etc., and to process the film. But as but this video, this is the hard part. If you can practice this successfully in the dark, to, what I would do is when you get your film, take off a three foot section in the light out of your film bulk film loader just as a practice, just for the first time, right? And um, and and just practice, practice, practice until you can get that on the reel in the dark without screwing it up. Once you figured that out, processing film, black and white film is simple, simple. Okay, that's it for Photo Universe. Thanks for watching. Hope that helped. Bye.